Good morning, everybody. We are doing Daf Nun today. We left yesterday at the two dots, two, four, six, eight, call it 10 lines from the top of Daf Nun Amid Aleph. Yesterday, we started a new Mishnah. We got very technical into the various um, Tumas Mace and the various requirements uh, for what constitutes Tumas Mace. For another, we started uh, yesterday, we talked about uh, the entire mace, parts of a mace, and we also mentioned this idea of Netzel and Malay Tarvud Rekev, and that's really where today, today we're going to be focusing on what, on this Netzel piece, and towards the end, really tomorrow is the Tarvus Nekev, Rekev, Tarvud ne Rekev, but uh, we'll, we'll get started a little bit today. Yo, we got Thursday. 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 Yeah. I will tell you tomorrow is unbelievably technical. So if you think today is if you think today is technical, tomorrow's technical. Uh, I was telling Ozzy, we are gonna we are gonna be taking a trip today and all sorts of various sugars of Tuma. So it's all good. All right, so let's get started. So the Azahu, so again, the Mishnah said Alkazaias Mace, Alkazaias Netzel. Azahu Netzel. What what is this idea of Netzel? So it's so it's basar hames shakara. So it's 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 uh, flesh that decomposed and congealed, or umohel shertiach, or some sort of like you know liquid of some sort that comes out of a mace that uh, that boils. So the gemara again, it's, it's kind of odd. It's like why is there this emphasis on on something that that's congealed? Like it needs to be congealed. It, it should be you know flesh of a person, whether it's congealed or not, right? So the Gemara says, if, if we're not really sure, whatever the substance is, we're not entirely sure if it, you know, if it came from a human or whatever it is. So Kikarish, my hobby. So the fact that it's congealed, I mean, it could be juice that congealed. Like, oh, who cares that it's congealed? And Ella Diadina did day, who rather we must know that it came from the mace, right? So then the low card. Like, so then even if it's not congealed, if it came from a mace, then it should be this netzel. So, so what are we talking about? Why is there this focus on, on this congealing process? And Tosos kind of speaks out. It's, the question is the same with this boiling concept. Like, we're doing some science experiment, like something can boil if it doesn't boil. So Amr um, Rabbi Yirmiya, Rabbi Yirmiya explains, he says, no, it's bistam. The, the, the point is, we, we do know that this came from a person, but again, a, apparently there are certain secretions from a human that wouldn't constitute netzel. So for example, mucus or saliva, that wouldn't constitute uh, netzel. So he says, e karash mo'elhu. And apparently, again, this is just scientific. If the substance has the ability to congeal, so if we see it's congealed, then we will automatically know that it's, that it, that it's mo'el, that it's the sort of liquids that can constitute netzel, and it's not you know, mucus or whatever it is. But low karash, if, if, if it's not congealed, then dilma keiko veneu, then maybe I'll tell you it's mucus or saliva or whatever it is, and therefore that would not constitute netza. Okay. So Baimine Abaya me Rabba. So Abaya asked Rabba a question. He said, Yesh Netzel Lebehema, O A Netzel Lebehema. This whole concept of Netzel, of of uh decomposing flesh constituting tuma. We spoke out the other day, right, that there is such concept of Tumas Nevelo. So do we have this concept of Netzel by by Tumas Nevelo or not? Can, can uh Flesh of a behemoth becomes so decomposed to constitute net cell or or not. And the, the question is really like this. Miam Renon Gemiri Netzel Dasime Adam Aval Dasi Behema Lo. Adam Loshna. This apparently this entire concept of net cell is a halakha emotion sinai. So does it only exist when it comes to a person, Tumas Mace, or does it even apply by uh Tumas Nevela? So we're, we're going to take our first trip. This is uh, there's this sugya out in Bakoros. And the question is like this. Tumas Nevelo, the Pusuk says, I, I was telling someone, I forgot my Gemara this morning, so I got to go to the Pumish to get these Pusukim. But the Pusuk by Nevelo says, Lo soklu kal Nevelo, you should not eat any Nevelo. What do you do with it? Like ger, ashavisharecha titnena. You got to give it to the ger. This is obviously not the ger, it's Sedek, right? This isn't like you're, you're uh, a Jew. This is a ger tosha. So your non-Jewish neighbor, if you can even find those anymore and Rogers Park, you give the <laughs> Nevela to, to that person. So the question is exactly, you know, what constitutes Nevela? 
one mandamer says that it's only going to be a nevela to the extent it's suitable to be eaten by a neighbor, only to the extent you would go to your neighbor and give them the food. But if you have food that uh, is not suitable for a neighbor, it's suitable for a dog, maybe it's it's old or whatever it is, so then it wouldn't have the Timus nevela anymore. So the Gemara says, our Gemara, says, Ha nicha leman amar tuma chamura ad lager v'tuma kala ad kelev. Hanicha, according to the Mandamur, says that Tumah Chamura, and this Sugya Tumah Chamura just refers to Nevela. Chamura is just relative to Tumas Kala, which is just regular Tumas Open and Mashkin. So there is one Mandamur who says that Tumah Chamura, meaning Nevela, retains its status of Tuma only so long as it's suitable for a, for a non Jew and the Tumah Kala the Kelev. So then Shopper, obviously you don't even have this question because Netzel isn't suitable to be eaten by a non Jew, and therefore clearly it's not going to have its Tuma. But but according to the other Mandamar who says that that Nevela retains the status of Toma even so long as it's suitable to be eaten by a dog, so then Ma'ikala Memer. So again, you have this question, this net cell, which the Gemara is assuming right now is suitable to be eaten for, by a dog, is it, does it retain its Toma? Or do you say, no, it's only Nevela that could be eaten by a dog. But if net cell isn't even Nevela, net cell is something else, and therefore... Netzel would not retain its status as Tumah. And by the way, the Rishonim speak out, we are past the Nazar part of the Sugi. We're on a tangent right now. This is just a separate question. of Netzel, does it apply to Tumas Nevela or not? So the Gemara says, Tashma, we have a, a, a Raya, bringing a Raya from a Mishnah in Zavin. So Himchu Ba'or Tameh. Let's say you've got this carcass of a bird. So it's not exactly, uh, you know, Nevela's Behema, but it's close enough. So you've got this, you know, fat or an avela of a bird or whatever it is and you melt it down tummy that that and you melt it down like in a in a pot like in an oven or something so tummy that retains its status of tuma but the chama if this carcass of a bird just melted out in the sun then it's tahar and the gemara says this this kind of sounds like netzel right and if you're going to tell me that it retains the status of tuma so long as it's suitable to be eaten by a dog so then afilu bechama nami Hmm. Right, then even if it melts out in the sun, yeah. that should constitute Netzel. And this seems to have our answer that that uh, maybe Netzel, you know, obviously Netzel doesn't apply to an animal because why is this case tar? It should really be tummy. But the Gemara says, no, Amos, Mom, when would this thing, you know, literally melt down? It would have had to be sitting in the sun for who knows how long and it would have been disgusting and came into Isra Chavale off our. The point is, at that point, once you this animal carcass, this bird carcass is sitting out in the sun and decomposing and melting down, it's not even suitable for a dog at that point. And therefore, we can't bring a riot one way or another. You know, this, this, so we, the bottom line is we're going to leave the sugar without knowing whether Tumas Netzel or whether Netzel applies to an Avela or not. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, not, oh well, or anything like not that. Not at yeah. all. So the whole point of it is that you're no say, let's say, because I said that so. Exactly. By behema. Yeah. I'm a behema. Of a behema. You, you have a two Exactly. So according to the Mandamaro says that it's only, Tumas Nevela only applies as long as it's suitable for your neighbors. So then, of course, this is the question. The question is, yeah. It's not, the, okay. So it's not the, okay. So, so, I, only, so only where on the Nevela would be the Tame. Exactly. Because I said, it sounds like we're still trying to figure out what this right. Netzel is. So we know what it is by a human. Yeah. By a human, it's some sort of body, you know, it's flesh that decomposed or something like that. And, and it has the ability to congeal. So mucus, you know, wouldn't 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 be good. It'd have to be something else. But what was your question? Sorry. No, no, the first of all, the comments, whether you would consider it like a pellet, whether it's considered where it is. Yeah, I tell her veto, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so moving on to the next figure that again is just not Nazar related. Um, so Tanan. <laughs> Tanan. Kol <laughs> Hanitsok Tahar Chutz Midvash Hazipin Vasakiko. So this is, uh, where are we in Machshirin right now? So we were going yeah, from, Machir. yeah, so from Zavim to Machshir. So the question is like this. Let's say you have, you know, two cups and you've got a liquid in a cup and the bottom cup is whatever it is, is tame, and the top is tahar and you're pouring from one to the other. Clearly the liquid from the tahar that lands in the tame is going to become a tarubas of tame and it's going to be tame. Mm -hmm. But what about if you stop pouring? All the liquid that remains in the top cup that was tahar is that tummy or is it tar? Why would you think it's tummy? Because while you were pouring, there was a stream connecting the two. So when you pick the cup back up, whatever remains 
Is it tahar or tame? So the Mishnah in Machshirin says, Kol hanitzok tahar, it's all going to be tahar, chutz mitvash hatzipim vatzapich. I'm not going to pretend to know what these are, but these are some sorts of honey or a honey that's mixed with flour. The point is, it's very, very thick. And therefore, the assumption is that while it was connected, again, it's, there's some thickness to it, viscosity, whatever it is. And therefore, the Tanakhama says, viscosity? Yeah, I use it all the time. Jesus. So therefore, the Tanakhama says that these particular substances are going to be tummy. Bishamai is always more masha, right? He says, even if the top cup retained this mikvah, this, this infamous porridge that comes up every now and again, this porridge of beans or, or, or whatever it is, a different type of bean, that also, his theory is that when you pick the top cup back up, I guess it, it's some of these strands of whatever, it's thick enough that it springs back. So some of the strands that I guess was hitting the bottom cup, maybe, you know, not with gravity, whatever it is, it kind of springs back. And therefore, again, it can bring the tumma back to the top cup. Mm -hmm. And the question that the Gemara is going to be dealing with is what exactly is an Akuta Samaflokas between the Tanakama and Beis Shammai? Does the Tanakama agree to Beis Shammai that the reason why the top cup, the tar cup would be tummy is because things kind of spring backwards? They just disagree on this mikpah shall grease in or shall pool, does it really spring back enough? Like they need more spring back and you get that with your honey, but not with the uh, pool. Or do the chacham say, no, I don't really hold this whole spring back concept. It's all about thickness and these other things just aren't thick enough. The honey is thick enough. And that, that's really this question. What exactly is this machloka? So by Rama Bar Chama, yesh nitzok lo'ochlin o e nitzok lo'ochlin. And he's asking, this concept of nitzuk, of, of the liquids in the cups, what if you had a, a solid, what if you had food and you melted it down to become a liquid? So you had fat or something like that and you melted it down. Would it be subject to this uh, to this same machlokas miyam rinan? And it's really it's really both sides of what we just spoke out. Miyam rinan, mishundi isve ri ri, that the Tanakama, the reason why, you know, they held that this, you know, porridge stuff uh, isn't subject to this rule is because uh, it doesn't spring back enough. The honey less buriri. So same thing with this fat that gets melted down. It also wouldn't spring back enough. Oh, Dilma, we shouldn't do some clean on who. Or, or maybe it's because the things that the Tanakama holds are nitok is they're very, very thick. The haka hasmichen. And same thing with this animal fat or whatever it is. Maybe it's human fat. I don't even know. Whatever this fat is that gets melted down, it would be thick. So that, that's really this question. This concept of nitzuk, would it apply to Oakland that were melted down or not? So Amar Rava, Tashmai is going to bring a raya. Chelev hames shu So if you got a piece of fat um, that is one piece and vihi ticho, and then you melted it down, tummy. So it's going to retain its status of tuma. But hayim afurud. But let's say it was separate pieces, each of which were less than a kazayas. The ticho when you melted them all down, tahar. So that would be tar. So the Gemara says, If you're going to tell me that meaning um, these, these, well, we'll see. So when you have one piece of fat, and you melt it down, the assumption the Gemara is making right now in their science experiment is the Gemara is making right now in their science experiment is the way this breaks down in the heat is you have multiple pieces so it breaks down from one piece to multiple pieces. And then when it gets melted down, some of the pieces must connect with the others. And therefore, from the fact that you're telling me that one piece, when it's melted down, it becomes tame, you're telling me that there must be this connector, this this, this nitzo. Is this um, of, a, of a man? Or yeah, of a of a man. Man. yeah. So the Gemara is saying, based on their understanding of how chelev would melt down in a pot, it seems to be a raya that because from the fact that you're or, sorry, yesh because from the fact that you're telling me it's tame, that sounds like these smaller pieces can all combine together uh, to, re to, to retain their status of tuma. But basically, Amar of Zeri says, I kind of disagree because Anna, Umar, Bered, Ravina, we had a different way of understanding this case. Targimna, Hacha, Mayaskinan, we were going to make this massive ukinta. We go into Bahadi, Demirtachle, Salak, Amuda, Dinora, there was a, a massive heat a massive fire and just kind of melted the entire thing at once and it, it, the whole thing kind of shot up to the top of the pot and, and mm -hmm. connected in one spot and the bottom line is 
uh, the bottom line is your understanding of how the science experiment would have worked where you had one piece of, of fat and it kind of broke down into different pieces that all, as they were melting, they kind of connected into one another. That's not how this works. You'd have one piece, it would be a, it would be a flash heat. It would all kind of melt down in, in an instant. It would all kind of connect together. And therefore there's no, there, there's no Raya one way or another. All right, very good. And so Amrle Ravina Laravashi, Ravina says to Ravashi, I don't even understand this question. I mean, shouldn't the mission itself should give us our answer? Because Tashma, Beshame Omrim, Afa Mikba shall grease in the shall pool, Mipne Shahain so let him laugh around. He says, Beshamai says that even this infamous mikba, this porridge of grease and shell pool, it's it's subject to Nitsuk. Why? Because it kind of springs back. So, and the way the rush understands this question is we have no reason to think that the Tanakama is just arguing with Beishamai. They must just, meaning that the, the concept of Nitsuk is because things spring backwards. They just don't necessarily agree that a pole of Mitzri has that quality. But in theory, everyone agrees that the determining factor is, does it spring back or does it not? So at this fad or whatever it is, we should all agree it doesn't spring back. So what, what's even our question? But the Gemara says, well, why are you assuming that's the Maklokas? Like we spoke out earlier. Midi area, Hasam Mishum Dismith and Hasam Mishum Riri. Maybe it's Beishamai says the determining factor is that something springs back and the Chacham just disagree. And they say, no, we think it's all about viscosity. It's all about thickness. So still, we, we today the theme seems to be not really answering our questions. Um, so we have, you know, various questions. They go unanswered. And now we're going to move on. So the next case of the Mishnah is record is this male tarbud rekev. When we learned the Mishnah, we said it's a ladle full of uh, this, you know, bone dust or whatever it is. And again, tomorrow we're going to get way more into this, but for now, we'll just go to the two dots at the bottom. So the kama shiuro, what, what is a ladle full? I mean, ladles presume they are different sizes, right? So what exactly is the shear? So chizki amar male fisa sayad, it's the amount that would fill you the palm of your hand. Rabbi Yochan amar male chafna, this is uh, like Yom Kippur, right? We've got ladles, we've got Malay Chafnaf. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's your entire hand, not just your palm. So it's not, we have a Mishnah. Where is this Mishnah? This is in Ahalos. So we are spanning the gamut. So this is a Mishnah in Ahalos. Male Tarvud Rekev Sha'amru. This, what is the shear of this ladle full of dust? So it's Yeshnan me Iker et Spos Ulamala Diver Rameir. Rameir says it's from your knuckles upwards. That's his shear. They say, no, it's the entire hand. So Rabbi Yochanan, who said it was the entire hand, he's going like the Rabbanan. Chizkiah, who said that it's uh, it's like your your palm, who is he going like? Who said it's knuckles to the top of your fingers. Who said the entire hand. So Amri, the Gemara is going to give two answers. Maybe Mali Fisa Sayad Umolo Kishri Espa Osa Lamala Chashiru. Maybe it's all the same. You're right. They 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 uh, described it differently, but it's all the same shear of Mayor Shear and Fiskia Shear is all the same shear. Amar Le Rashimi Bar Adala Rav Papa he, to give a second answer said, well, maybe Mimai Dahai Makashri Espaosa Ulamala Larosh. When when Rav Mayor says it's from your knuckles upwards, why are we assuming he means upwards this way? Maybe your hand is like this, and upwards means this way. And it's the palm of your hand, just like Chizkiya said. Dilma lamata midide, the Havale Malofisa Sayad, and the Gemara mysteriously finishes Teku, which Tosla says, if you look at the very last few words on the page, Logar seen and Teku. He doesn't understand what this means. Um, well, we're not going to turn the page. We'll turn the page tomorrow. But we can turn the page for